Darren and I do a series of Ag PhD workshops every winter, and we quite often are talking to wheat farmers about stream barring in wheat. And we get a lot of questions saying, what do you mean, what's stream barring? Well, we also get the question <laughs> of, well, can I just broadcast spray nitrogen yep. out over my wheat? And I say, sure, if you want to kill it. Why well, not? you're not going to kill it. You're just going to really burn it, depending on how much water you put with that. So anyway, the point is, on your farm, if you need more nutrients out there, one of the best ways to go about getting those nutrients out is by using stream bars and basically all it is is you're going to have a stream of fertilizer that runs straight down from this little bar and the reason why you want that stream there is you have a lot less leaf burn. If you're going out spraying with let's say a flat fan nozzle then you're going to have good spray coverage. You're going to spray, spray a mist across the crop and that's not what we want. When we talked about spray drift in our farm basics today we talked about those big droplets and how they don't stick as well on the leaf and that's exactly what we're trying to do. Make great big droplets have this stream so most of that nitrogen gets to the ground and very little ends up on the leaves. Okay, and it's not just nitrogen. A lot of times sulfur is another thing that we're quite often putting together with that nitrogen when we are stream barring in our wheat. And the reason why is we don't get free sulfur out of the air like we used to. We used to have a lot of air pollution in the United States, so we'd get what was called acid rain. It was a great thing for us farmers because oh, sure, well, yeah, it was, it was free great, sulfur. Brian. <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm a, willing to pay for a little sulfur. As a general rule though, for every 10 to 15 pounds of nitrogen you're putting out there, throw a pound of sulfur out that will help make your nitrogen more efficient. All right, well here's the question that I get and I'm sure we'll get some after this show. Why don't you guys just put it all out ahead of time? We put all ours out ahead, that's the only nitrogen we put on all year and our yields are fine. Well, we get those questions and then on a year like last year guys say, well wait a minute, how come my protein wasn't as good? Yep. Because we didn't have good nitrogen availability late in the season. That's one of the biggest reasons that we're stream barring to spread that out. The other reason would be to look at your soil and see if your soil can even handle it. Yeah, that's the whole thing. We always encourage you to be a good steward of your land. If you take your cation exchange capacity times 10, let's say your cation exchange capacity is 12. Multiply that times 10, that's 120. Okay, that's how many total pounds of nitrogen you can have in your soil at any one time without worrying tremendously about losing it. Well, if you're going for, let's say, 100 bushel wheat, you're probably going to want more than 120 units of nitrogen out there. So you've got to put more on a little bit later in the season. The other reason why you want to have that nitrogen available late is, like Darren said, with that protein, if you have your nitrogen leaching by the time you need it to have good protein levels, well, that's not a good thing. So basically, it allows us to use a little bit less nitrogen to do it in an environmentally friendly way and then also we can adjust the rate depending on what the season looks like. So if it looks like we got tremendous wheat coming we can put on a little more nitrogen. Well we talked about sulfur and nitrogen the other thing that a lot of guys like to put on later on is micronutrients. Now if you didn't get them put down for whatever reason you probably need some micronutrients. You can look at your soil tests or you can look at plant tissue tests throughout the season and see hey, you know, we're short on this micro, we're short on this micro. You certainly could do that through a stream bar application. Now, I do have some guys that say, well, I'll just put it in with my herbicide application and broadcast it that way. It's a big risk doing that with many of the herbicides you might mix it with. For example, anything that contains buckthorn, a husky, a wolf pack, a bronate, those types of products, you're going to have some burn when you mix any of these nutrients with it. Yeah, and, leaf burn. Yeah, and with a micronutrient product and a buckthorn, it's too much risk. Just use the micro through the stream bar. Yep, the thing that I always say with these micronutrients is you've spent all this other money to put the crop in don't forget about the last five bucks we quite commonly see micronutrients as one of the biggest yield limiting factors around the country in many different crops because people just aren't focused on it as farmers it's been burned into our brain NPK 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 well Micronutrients and sulfur are really important too. If you don't have adequate levels, you will not get top yields. Well, if you want to take your yields to that next level, one of the things you'll probably want to invest in if you're a wheat farmer is stream bars. If you don't have stream bars yet, you can find them all over the place. There's a number of different manufacturers that work with stream bars. Well, when you're using these stream bars, unfortunately, that's not really going to help you much with control of our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you what will stop it on your farm coming up next. <laughs> 